see this is oh I'm blowing that corner remember what I said about flick spinning though <laughs> Uh, before I started recording, I said, you can tell how bad a driver is based on how good at flick spinning they are. I think I did that pretty competently. Sounds plausible. Oh, God. Oof. Well. Uh, you were saying it'd be funny if I crashed, right? Quite hilarious. There we go. LOL. We got it in. That'll probably be the uh, intro clip for the for the episode on YouTube. I always do that if I crash. To be fair though, massively epic flick spin to get it going again. Oh, <laughs> oh golly. Anybody get dizzy yet? Yes. Oh, oh. Uh, figure out if I was the idiot or that's it. <laughs> we win. That was a lot of fun. That one. Let's give it, I swear to God, one more try. If this doesn't work, uh, I'm going to have to find some alternate programming here because I'm not going to oh, just keep beating my head against the wall here. So, okay. Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Christ Tile is here. I am here, Hi, we're in Morocco, if the AI doesn't crash real bad in the first couple of laps, we'll have ourselves a race, but if we don't, then never mind YouTube, you saw nothing. It's just, we need to get spread out, because when they try to pass each other a bunch, that's, that's when you get problems. But if we can get the cars spread out, we'll be feeling pretty good. Like, we're looking good up here. Well, no, never mind. We're going double wide here. Can we make it through? Can we make it through? All right, we're through. Nice. Good start. Good start. Now, I'll try not to rear end anybody in the hairpin. Uh, okay, so this is the 2010 version of the Morocco, the Marrakesh street circuit that was used by, gosh, I don't even know, but some minor league formula cars and some touring cars. Uh, it's kind of a very straightforward, interesting layout designed by the same folks who did Surfer's Paradise, AKA Gold Coast for the uh, supercars down in Australia. And IndyCar used to run that circuit. You'll see me run that later this year in the IndyCars. Uh, and we're calling them IndyCars now that I have my own channel. By the way, welcome to EtherX Nifty. Check out EtherX Social if you like the sound of my voice but don't like race cars, which is weird, but you know. That's an option. Did I introduce you this time around? We've tried this. This is like take five on this race, YouTube. So, uh, did I introduce Chrysotile, my cousin here? He's with me. Hello. All right. He knows more about F1 than I do, but kind of barely. Yo. Cars go vroom. I saw Alex floating around. I don't know if Alex is still in the chat. He knows lots about lots of things. I thought you meant Albon. No, no, no. Alex. I think Alex Mill. Alex Mill? <laughs> I don't know. The don't know Alex know. Mill. Threw Alex Albon into the sky. Shout out Indy to... IndyCar was doing that. Either way, shout out to Alex. He's one of my uh, most knowledgeable viewers. Always love seeing him. Yep, still there. Uh, feel free to fact correct us as we go. Or don't. It's funnier when we're wrong. Oh, it's funnier when we're wrong and we get called out for being wrong. My opinion, anyway. Hulkenberg's retired. Something happened there. Alright, I think we've got two laps completed. DRS is enabled. So now we can officially begin the clown show of cars stacking up on each other. Oh, yeah, but I don't know if I got done with that uh, intro promo. So Ether X Nifty is where you're finding the uh, sim racing on YouTube. Ether X Social is where you'll find things that aren't sim racing that are still Ether. You get more than just me over there. You get JC. You get Lone Asian. You get Jose. You get 
Yeah, lots of good, lots of good people. And me, unfortunately, perhaps. But uh, I kind of said this in a different video, but like EtherX Nifty was just kind of an outgrowth of EtherX Social because it was just kind of becoming a lot of Nifty does sim racing stuff. And uh, not that was not the original purpose of EtherX Social, so... <laughs> kind of put our heads together and decided new YouTube channel was in order. Uh, subscribe and follow and all that stuff, I guess. That That's what people say, right? Uh, Sucrime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex, can you fact check me? Uh, do people say like and comment and subscribe? So anyway, yeah, this was used in 2010 through, I want to say like 2013 in Morocco in the city of Marrakesh. I like the uh, the scenery. I like the background. All these like old style Middle Eastern buildings and like it's a very unique circuit in a lot of ways. And uh, one of them is the scenery. Oh, well, well oh, ah, that's, a, that's an Alphatari that did a 180 and looks like he kept going. It's DeVries. Uh -oh. I don't think I'm going to use DRS in this race because I I don't think that's fair to the AI to be honest they can use it if they want but I've noticed they don't particularly go faster with it like they're kind of afraid to go full throttle I think because it's so narrow That's our teammate Ricardo ahead of us. We started in uh, 17th. Uh, of note, Alonso started dead last. I don't know what happened to him in quali, but not a good time for Fred. Oh, we got the yellow in this corner. See, this is... Uh, what was going on at the start of the races that wouldn't let us get going. Here, let's see if we can file through one at a time. Maybe I can kind of help out, bump somebody around. Turn around? No? Alright, there we go. Well, he's out of the way anyway. That was Verstappen, by the way, so I think uh, Max is out. Uh-oh. Nowhere to go here. Yeah, I think this is going to be a race of high attrition. Yeah, Verstappen, that's a DNF. We're going to shortcut that chicane because Zhao is looking inside. And Albin is not full throttle. That's weird. So yeah, there's some drama for you. Verstappen, a DNF towards the back of the field for the, uh, definitely outside the points. Let's see, this is, oh, I'm blowing that corner. Remember what I said about flick spinning, though? <laughs> Uh, before I started recording, I said, you can tell how bad a driver is based on how good at flick spinning they are. I think I did that pretty competently. Yeah, we weren't making that turn. Oh, and we got a McLaren around. Which blocked off the other McLaren. You uh, still hear Christ tell? Yes. Good lap. You, you are driving. Zoom. And I'm trying to model this somehow. I went live, and then Christ Tile messaged me and was like, "I'm bored. Come hang out." And I'm like, "Eh, just come join me on stream." Which I can do. All right. So Norris is also out. 
We're down to 19 cars now. After about, a, 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 about one tenth of the race, I'd say. Not sure I meant to leave that tire graphic up on the top left, but okay. Jim, I don't need your advice. Let's see if I can clean up that. There we go. Okay. Now it's my classic nifty look. I leave that ballast thing up there because sometimes I add ballast to make it more fair for the AI if I'm basically too good. Right. Right now, though, I'm perfectly bad as it is. You're doing better than me, boss. It'd be fun to uh, get you over here sometime. Have you? Nope. Let's have not you play the play the race again. I would only play Project Cars, and I would uh, be. I have Project Cars too. All right, you turn back the right way. There, I helped. Did you see that act of good Samaritan ship? Samaritan. Could have put him under the wall. He was stuck on the wall, and I I bumped him so that he was going the right way. I deserve a cookie. Now we're going to try to run away from him so that uh, he doesn't run over us. Let's go. Alonzo's up to P13 from last place. It's, it's been that kind of race. But yeah, I really like, uh, I don't know if you have the stream pulled up, but I really like the scenery of this track. Like, what, what do you call these kind of buildings? Like, I would say Pueblo, like, because they're like, they're like that kind of clay, right? But it's like, I don't think that's the right word. I think it looks pretty, but I'm running this in like the lowest graphics, so my computer does not blow up. Well, what do you call like Middle Eastern style, like clay buildings? What do you call those? Uh, Mediterranean, maybe? Okay. Like, construction material-wise, what do you call that stuff? Uh... Terracotta, brick, stucco. I guess stucco, maybe, I don't know. Or terracotta. It's not brick because there's not individual you know what I mean it's all one right material yeah maybe it's one that's big brick, brick over there on the right what if it's all one big brick <laughs> I live in brick we got another yellow flag looks like whoever was in 11th bend it but it also looks like cars are getting through it oh that's uh, Hamilton Hamilton a DNF so it's basically if you're a big Talking. game if you're a big name or Hulkenberg, you're DNFing today, is what it looks like. Yeah, it's real tight, it's real narrow. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised that I could even consider running this race at all because this is exactly like the kryptonite for racing AI. Narrow with chicanes and things like that. Um, but it was basically good enough that I wanted to try it, and it only took, what, five restarts? But that we're going. Right. We're going. Lap 10 of 66. Ooh, missed my spot. There we go. We've got Zhao gaining on us. I think we've got another car off up ahead, or maybe that's still... Oh, that's still Hamilton. Oh, no. We've got... Uh, Zhao joining him? But we got... No, Zhao is the guy. Botas. Botas join... That's a little Mercedes reunion from like five years ago. That's what that is. Botas and Hamilton? Yeah, they're both stuck Has in the same really turn. Has it really been five years? Uh, 
Gotcha. I'm gonna bet five years ago they were together. Oh, and we got Alvin and uh, I guess that's Gasly. Fair. Gasly in the wall there too. We're up to P12. As we get thinned out here, there will be less crashing, of course, because there's less cars to crash. Hey, Devin, how you been? I haven't seen you in a long time. How's it going? Ferrari Master Plan at work. I mean, I haven't seen the Ferrari's DNF yet. Yet. Always expect the unexpected. Uh, I've been trying to, uh, I've been good, by the way, thanks for asking. Uh, I got a new microphone, how do I sound? But, um, I've been trying to be more of a daytime streamer rather than a nighttime streamer, just for, like, I, I, uh, what do, you, what do you call it? Circadian health, I guess? Like, you know, the sleeping health, right? Like, getting sleep at night instead of the day. Um, but I'm kind of relapsing here into being a nighttime person lately. So, here I am. <laughs> Always, always happy to see you, which by the way, same thing, I, I haven't caught uh, any of your streams lately just because I've been, I don't know, I've been going to bed at like 8 p.m. lately. Christ it's talking, very annoying that you yeah, do that. Say, Christ talk can tell you, because it's cut into my socialization outside of Ether as well. <laughs> hey, uh, Christ has been playing Stardew Valley and... Devin, were you playing Stardew? I know, um... Oh gosh, I can't think of it. One of the one of the guys uh, you would throw over to after after your streams, but... I was thinking you also played... Maybe I'm mixing people up. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Never mind. Who am I thinking of? Uh, he and his wife are farmers. They were raising chicks together on stream. Shout out to him. Devin, you'll know who I'm talking about, probably. I can't think of... I can't think of his name. I'm so good at shoutouts because I can't remember names. Shout out to that one guy that one time. PS5, cool. I'm, I'm a little jealous. Uh, what are you what are you playing on the PS5? I guess is uh, Knockout City is it still online? Because I know it was going away. I don't remember the date. I ask you this every time I see you. I'm learning that my memory is just garbage. Oh, it's okay. That happens. They're going too wide ahead of us. Will they make it? Yes, they will. Hamilton's still over there. For another month or so. You're going to do like a big final, like, marathon stream of it on its last day? That'd be pretty cool. That'd be something I would say I'd do and then wouldn't. <laughs> Trying not to run over Zhao here. got the inside. Wow, we might also get Alonzo on this same straightaway. Now we're gonna let Alonzo come back in. That turn is so weirdly designed. It arcs like it just... It's so narrow and it cuts back. 
at greater than a 90 degree angle. I don't know what it, what you know the dimensions are exactly, but it's not. It's not a turn that I would recommend people put on a racing circuit, but here it is. All right, we're around Alonso and we're in the points, everybody. For now. Yeah, for now. Uh, I'll also be starting up some Mario again. Not Mario Maker, though. I'm going to do some Super Mario World hacks. Um, just, to, just to do that for a bit. See how that goes. Because I don't know if you follow uh, EtherX Social on YouTube, but um, Lone Asian has been doing a lot of Pokemon hacks lately. lately. And I've been playing Mario hacks for a while, and I'm like, you know, that'd be fun to just play some Mario hacks. I'm kind of inspired by that. Plus, I need some content on the main channel now that I have EtherX Nifty on YouTube as like a separate channel for racing. How good, how, what's my skill level at working in plugs naturally into the conversation? What do you mean natural? <laughs> Take that as a 1 out of 10. Yeah. In all fairness, I am a little preoccupied doing this. Well, that's that's not my fault. You wanted to hang out. I was I did streaming. want to hang out. Yeah. My professor, well, I got he's not a professor. My instructor was like, "Hey, here's the homework assignment." And then gave no directions on how to We have to use two different softwares we've never used before with no directions. And they're about as intuitive uh how to say this like they look like they could run on, like, the first version of Windows ever. Like, they're that kind of program. Yeah. So, you know. We're, we're fighting a downhill battle here. Or uphill battle? I think things are going are... Things are going downhill, but I have to go up the hill. Yeah. Uh, the computer program has the high ground. You underestimate my power. The captain, Ricardo, behind his impressive now. Alright, we've moved up to eighth. Let's go. We're around our teammate Ricardo. Uh oh. Sky Children of the Light. What is, uh, what kind of game is that? I've never heard of that. Crystal, have you heard of that? Um. How's Allison been, by the way? I've... But yeah, have you heard of that game? No. No, I'm very out of the loop on games lately. Fair enough. Me? Money for games? No, no, no. Money for PC parts. Yes. I, pontif I pontificated on getting this microphone for a while because of cost, so I hear you there. It's just like, eh. But I was trying to do a voiceover for my last racing video on EtherX Social, right? To explain that I was going over to EtherX Nifty. And the my headset microphone kept dipping in and out, which was always a problem with it, but it was really bad on that voiceover. And it was either like re-record like a seven minute straight voiceover or try to like edit the audio for it. And I edited the audio for it using just about all the tools I've learned in like a professional recording career musically. Uh, and that took forever and it didn't even sound good coming out of it. And I'm like, okay, it's time for a new microphone because this is kind of dumb. Do I know the game Journey, or does Crisis Tile know the game Journey? Um, no. It's a, that's a negative. I know the band Journey. Don't stop believing. Is that like a... Uh, it was like, a, it's an indie game. I know that much. S. 
Hey, Nifty. S. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pixalis. <laughs> I think Journey is an indie kind of adventure game, but whatever. MMO. Oh, I stay away from MMOs. Oh, like Spyro. Okay. I got you. But it's cute and fun. I'm all about Spyro cute and fun. is not cute and fun. Spyro is so cute. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, He's it's a cute little the, dragon. The way they said it makes it seem like it's not cute and fun. Oh, like, okay. You're busting their chops. Yeah. I thought you were busting Spyro's oh, chops. Speaking of was... cute and fun, you should watch the show I recommended you to, to you like six months ago. What show? I hate you. We talked about this like two days ago. Yeah, yeah, but we're on stream now, so you gotta say what show. Oh, I have to plug it now? What am you, I? You have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a sponsor, but... That's stupid. Uh, Hilda. Hilda. Rage. Oh, I did. I did legitimately forget what show. I hate you. <laughs> it's so fun and just chill. And I believe you. Fantasy. Yeah, you should play Stardew sometime. I agree. I think Stardew would be great. I should get Artie involved on it. Or like, how many how many people can you have in a multiplayer Stardew session? Yes. There's no limit. Well, you're not gonna hit that limit. Four. Vixala says four, which I thought was the answer as well. Mm -hmm. You but, can go over four. But here's the thing: last time I played multiplayer in Stardew Valley, which I this does not make me an expert. Okay, I was just playing with the uh, Artie. Um, well, it's... Okay, I was going to say, because you used to have to hack it to get any sort of multiplayer, right? Which yeah. is what we did. Like, uh, it must have been during the pandemic. Yeah, I went in, I edited some text files, I made it work. But, now you can use Smappy, and Smappy is great. You know what Smappy is, or no? Uh, I think that's what I used to get it multiplayer in the first place, but nice. uh, for, for just people listening mod. at home, okay. It, it's like Curse Forge, basically. Switch has a multiplayer. Yeah, but you probably can't mod it easily. Probably not. Oh, that'd be Do not try to mod your Switch. Oh my yeah, God, like that one guy, dude. Poor Bowser. <laughs> That guy, he, he had to do like a 20 month prison sentence. He owes Nintendo like 160 million dollars. I has thought to he give only them, owed 14 million. I don't know. And he has to give them like 30% of his revenue for the rest of his life. Like 30% of the probably, money he earns. Well, only because they don't think he'll get the millions he owes them. So. Right. Because it's. Anyway. Right. Just don't mod your way. Switch, people. By <laughs> the way, a crummy situation. Yeah, Especially uh, for a guy named Bowser. Yeah, I can't believe they do that to their own. Oh, Stroll has bended into the wall. I think he was leaving. Wow. Maybe he can use Daddy's money to get out of the wall. I can't be too mad at the Stroll family. They own one of my favorite racetracks in the world. Okay. Uh, Mont Tremblant up in Quebec, Canada. Sorry, I think you choked on something. Yeah, it was peanut butter. But, um... Mont Tremblant in Canada. It's just the most, in my opinion, underrated racing circuit in the world. It's amazing. Um, and beautiful, because it sits on, like, basically a ski resort. F1 ran there in, like, the 60s. Champ Car had a race in the late 2000s. This is what I do instead of looking up video games, by the way, is I know random race car things from history. But um, not as much as Alex, if he's still floating around. But still... Uh, it's just a fantastic circuit, and the Strolls, being the uh, good Canadians that they are, own it. 
Shout out to Canada. I'm okay not shouting out Canada. Uh, Ether is technically headquartered in Canada, so shout out to Canada. Mm. I'll, I'll hold. Canada's fine. They don't deserve a Stanley Cup, though. I... 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 It depends who's on the other side. Hey. Like, if it comes down to L.A. or... Well, Canada... Is there any Eastern... Con oh, yeah, Toronto. If it comes down to L.A. or Toronto, I'd much rather see Toronto win it. You can't say you want Toronto to win the Stanley Cup. Yes, I can. I feel no, a kinship yeah. with Steve Dangle. Don't feel kinship with Steve Dangle. He is me before the Blues won the Stanley Cup. And he will forever be you. That is a past you. I understand that's a past me, but I feel like uh, other people should share in that joy at least once in their lives. We're coming if up everyone, on Russell here. If everyone experiences joy, we will have sadness. No one, which is why we need people like the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's true, the Cubs did win, so we can't just point at the Cubs. Sorry about that. I did say the Cubs were going to win that year at the start of the season, and then they did. Yeah. I did say it out of spite, though. Also, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking I'm making tahini tonight, but I don't know if I have enough sesame seeds for that. Inside like a of up. Russell. Passed on up to P6. Oh, Ever had tahini? Uh, Probably. Maybe. Have. I've eaten a lot of things that I don't remember or even know what they are. Is tahini a sauce? Pretty much. It's just like ground sesame seeds. At its, at its most basic form, it's just like ground sesame seeds. Does it kind of have a peanut buttery flavor? Yeah, it's it's ground sesame seed with like a little bit of oil and um, maybe some salt. At, at its most base, you can obviously do more than that if you'd like. Yeah, I think Artie was cooking with it for a while, so I think I've had it, yeah. I was thinking of making some and then making my own hummus. And then making my own curry for dinner tonight, but then I had a frozen pizza for lunch, and my tummy hurt, so I stopped. Yeah, uh, Artie and I went and saw the new Dungeons and Dragons movie. We got was one it of those... good? It's one of those ones yeah. I've been looking forward to seeing. I enjoyed it. I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons though, so I can't tell you like the validity of the source material. But I enjoyed the movie. It was it was eh, a I mean, action the film. Are better. It was an action film that refreshingly didn't take itself to, like, grim, dark, serious. You know what I mean? Like, just so much stuff is just, like, grim, dark, serious nowadays. And it's just kind of a buzzkill. Does buzz have fun? Yeah, it, like, it was still an adventure. It still had moments. Like, the characters were still sincere. You know what I mean? But it, it wasn't just a downer movie. And that was really refreshing. A lot of jokes that D&D players will get, yeah. Okay, I, you know, I would assume that that was the case, but I can't say. Uh, Artie is the only person I... Well, I went with... It was Artie, me, and another friend. And um, Artie was the only one there who knew anything about Dungeons & Dragons, so... I know a bit. I haven't played yet. I'd like to, but... I've watched a couple, like... I've watched a decent number of videos on it at this point, and... Like, done shit. And I'm excited for it. Like, just have a little fun. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's like an animated six episode series on Netflix. But if you enjoyed the movie, you'd probably enjoy that. Yeah, alright. I forget what it's called. Uh, that's pretty good. Fun. Nothing too serious. I can look it up later and send it to you. But it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm out here to promote things. Something super wholesome was the theater we went to is kind of like, it's one of those theaters where you get like a, 
a reclining chair and you know it's like one of those kind of like really I don't want to say luxurious but just kind of like upper upper end seating kind of things like and this woman sat near us this old lady she had to be at least 70 right showed up to the Dungeons and Dragons movie she brought herself a quilt she like laid down with the quilt because you could recline the chair right and just right. like happily watched this movie and I'm like how freaking wholesome this this old lady just showing up to this movie <laughs> and like with her little quilt and just in the theater lounging about I just thought I thought that was really cute I mean when you've got time to retire and have nice little fun like that oh, why yeah. not no yeah I would love to show up to a movie theater with a quilt okay so I am in desperate need of finding like a movie buddy this summer because my local theater was like hey you give us twenty dollars a month, you can come in as much as you want <laughs> and watch as many movies as you want. And I'm like, that pays itself off in like two movies. It's like an adult movie ticket is like nine fifty, but like twenty. It wasn't even twenty dollars. It was like nineteen dollars. So like once a week, go to the movies. That sounds great. Yeah, I, uh, I feel the same, like Artie and I feel the same, because this new theater opened up near us, the one I was talking about. And Mine's got the recline seats, too. Yeah, exactly. And uh, every Tuesday they have, I think, $6 tickets, which is pretty good, right? Yeah. Oh, dude, they have something at mine where it's, like, mystery movie. Like, they, they show it before it's released. You don't know what it's going to be. It's just $5. <laughs> That's Why cool. not? I also, yeah, Mario something. movie was great. Yeah, totally. Um, Fix Alice, it was great. Lots of little details that weren't in like the foreground off often. I'm just like in game or in universe mechanics from whatever. It was really fun to watch, and I got to watch it in a theater where it was just me and my friend. So we got to laugh and talk about it during the movie. That's cool. I love it when it's an empty theater except for you and your buddies or whatever and you like you don't have to worry about being polite or whatever you can just you want to shoot the shit you can shoot the shit you have a theater I, to yourself that's how the last like two or three movies i've been to were so i don't remember when it was but like when the last godzilla movie came out i think because covid i stopped going to the movies so this might have been the first time i've been to the movies in a while actually but yeah same actually but like um the like latest Godzilla movie came out. It was like the night after it released, and we went to the theater. No one was there, and it was great because we could whoop and enjoy the. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's yeah. that kind of movie. It's stupid action. It's just fun to watch, and it was great. I liked the Nintendo movie again. It that just it's refreshing. To Mario have movie. things that aren't so dark. Because so much fiction lately, just it's like, oh, we gotta take it real dark. We gotta gotta question our sanity with this. It's like, eh, that's not like... I think the best example of that, and I'm sorry I'm gonna take it there, is Star Trek lately. It's just like, stop it. I don't... Why are you pulling Icheb's eyeball out of his socket on screen live? Like, stop it. I don't need that. I don't need that in my life. You did, you just didn't know it. No, I didn't. Nobody needed that. Everyone hated it. I can't believe they did that to my boy, Icheb. Anyway, so, like, these last two movies, they're really giving me, like, confidence that Hollywood can make exciting, fun movies again. Mario and Dungeons and & Dragons, right? Like, it's like, oh, hey, we can write movies that are adventures and fun to see well if you liked the D, &D movie but do, are interested in something that might be a little more serious but still fun you know has its fun laughable moments i strongly recommend to you castlevania on netflix okay yeah I, well i've heard good things about that very good very funny lots of haha -ha moments I was really sad I woke up today and this was the first week all year where there wasn't new Star Wars content available. 
Oh yeah. I mean, I haven't caught up on all the Mandalorians yet, but we started the latest season. Because I think what we had Andor, we've had Kenobi, we've had Bad Batch season two, and Mando. And maybe something else in there that I forgot. Oh, I haven't seen Bad Batch yet. Have you seen the first season? No. No. Oh. Have you seen Star Wars The Clone Wars, the animated series? No. Fuck you. Fair. Watch that first. We should uh, watch it together after we get done with Deep Space Nine. I'm not making that promise. <laughs> Deep Space Nine is good, but it's just not my cup of tea. I can't binge it. I don't know why. I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. I like making fun of the stupid characters sometimes. Hey, what? The bad reviews helped it? Bad reviews helped what? Uh, Fixalas says the bad reviews helped Mario. Who reads movie reviews anymore? I feel like somebody else reads them and tells me about it. Yeah. I mean, no offense if you read movie reviews, but like... I don't know. All I've seen the last few years is critics are usually wrong. Or people just review bomb websites. Yeah. Because they didn't like the movie or whatever. Like, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm trust my friend. People, like, people I know. I can't trust the media these days, you know? <laughs> uh, the other person talking is Chrysotile. He's my cousin. Say hi, Chrysotile. Hi, Chrysotile. Alright, I'm toasting sesame seeds in the kitchen right now. That's hot. It's a necessary step to bring out their flavor or something. I read that in the blog post. Christ Tile wanted to hang out and I was getting ready to stream and I was like, come hang out with me on stream. The fans love me. We used to uh, stream together on a Twitch channel called Getting Sleepy TV. Um, so it's not completely out of nowhere that we chat and stream. I don't know why I did that. I just tried to like steer around the hairpin underhanded. Like, I don't know, that was stupid. Stupid hand placement. If it makes you feel better, I wasn't in the room to see you do it just not how you drive a formula car. It's how you drive like a Jeep. It's just getting bored. <laughs> we are catching, it looks like Science is in third. If we can get around Science, we're on the podium. And then Leclerc is in second. Good day for Ferrari so far. And so I don't far. know who's in first. Not you. Well, not me, no. We're pretty far down the road. I think I'm gonna add some garlic to this tahini. No, I should. No, nah, I can do that, yeah. I'll do what I want, it's my cooking. Yeah, I was gonna see if I could figure out how to make uh, hummus tonight. Yeah. And then maybe over the weekend, I'll try making like roasted red pepper hummus. Perez is in first, I think. Really? Is that? Do you come here to watch me win? Because I don't know if I've won a race all year. Blues Brother 57 is Chrysotile. Just no. Letting that be known. No, that's my biggest uh, fan. I'm not gonna gaslight my audience just for you to have some lols. I will. Yeah, no, you'll get yourself banned from Rocket League again. What can I say? Toxic. Nothing, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we're... Everybody here is stuck in line behind the Alphatari of Tsunoda. I have a weird question for you. Go ahead. <laughs> when me? was the last time you had, like... You had fruit that wasn't, like, the typical standard ones? Uh, I guess it depends what is standard fruit. I don't know, like, I, to me in my head, like, a standard fruit 
you know, it's like strawberries, blueberries, bananas, grapes, the basic. You know? I don't I don't know how to answer that, to be honest. Like, I don't know. When was the last time you had like a durian or like a star never, fruit? Never had durian. I don't remember the last time I had a star fruit. Or I don't know, a dragon fruit. How adventurous some, are you with your fruits? <laughs> I guess not very. I had some grapes the other day. What kind? Green? Green? Solid choice. Grapes really feel like a mixed bag getting them. Like, I never get them at the store. Like, I don't trust them. The bags are always open and people will just, like, rip off the bunch of grapes that they want and leave the bad ones behind. And, like, I don't care enough to inspect my produce super close. Yeah. So I feel like I'm just going to be always left with the with the crappy produce. Yeah, I feel that. At least with grapes. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not good. What? One of my... my so my neighbor... Story, story time chat. My up upstairs neighbor, right? Third floor. I'm ground floor. Asked me if I've been getting ants lately. And I said no, I've only seen like two, maybe three. You know, nothing like Armageddon, right? Right. But I'm starting to see more. And she told me that the neighbor in between us has just been leaving her trash outside her apartment and like not taking it. To That's the gross. Up yeah, and like just doesn't take it to the dumpsters or anything and just leaves it there for days on end. This is the same neighbor that left like a rotting pumpkin outside their apartment for like a month and a half. Right? Ooh. Yeah. Now I might have to let him know, hey, I'm getting ants. Tell your uh, landlord, maybe? Yeah. I mean, you, know, you never want to be that guy, but sometimes you have to be that guy. Yeah, the problem is, I don't want to be that guy. Yep, yep, I feel you. So yep. I am harboring a second cat that I didn't tell them about. Oh, I see. You, uh, you've you got some skin in the game here. Right. As far as sliding things under the nose of the landlord. Well, I, I have... <laughs> I have called the landlords twice, and both times I was complaining about my apartment smelling like cigarettes and stuff. Yeah. Because my neighbors are smoking, like, right outside my apartment, and I find that annoying. Or they're smoking in their apartment, I don't know. But either way, like, could you not? We share spaces. Whether you realize it or not, you know? Even if there's a feeling between us. Your right. air is unfortunately my air. All right, we're around oh. Leclerc for third place, by the way. That's, that's Let's the go. Podium. We are in a Ferrari sandwich right now. How many laps you got left? 30. Too easy for you. Too easy for I, you. I honestly can't set it any higher, so. Okay. Sure. I mean, I could turn up the ballast, I guess. Because we're around science for second now. Want me to turn up some ballast? In my mind, a ballast is part of a boat. So yeah, do that. Alright, we're gonna boat it up here. Anyways, yeah, my neighbor situation is whack. We'll go up to 40. So that's like 40 extra kilos, I think, is how that works. Kilos of... Grams. A kilogram? Kilogram, I think. Everything is set, of course, is metric. Nice. So, uh, we, we put on some weight. <laughs> About 80 pounds, I think. I genuinely do enjoy the metric system. Oh, I need to extend my braking zones. Oh, because you're heavier now? Yeah. Now. And it's interesting finding out which corners it really matters in.
What's the number? How many pounds like an F1 or even an IndyCar driver, I guess, lose during a typical race? Uh, I, I don't know. I know you're talking double digits, but I don't know how much. Oh, is it double digits? I thought it might only be like five pounds. For IndyCar? I think I've heard like 25 before. That's stupid. Some of those guys are twigs before they get in the car. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, you can look it up. You've got the internet at the tips of your fingers, everyone, but... Like, you know what? On second thought, 25 is actually probably insane. Maybe not yeah. that, but... Yeah, a lot. But I do know when IndyCar first installed the uh, aero screen, it became a huge topic of conversation. Drivers were literally not doing well because it was so hot. There was no air circulation into the cockpit. And, mm. uh... Like, guys were on the on the edge of passing out, it sounded like. Yeah, being a problem. They 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 addressed that though, right? Yeah, they did. They have some. Uh, they have they cracked a little hole at the very bottom, like a little slit at the very bottom of the arrow screen that lets air flow in, and then they've also got a air intake that connects straight to their helmet. You'll see these like hoses coming out the top of their heads now. That's an air inlet for the helmets. Mm. But it's just raw. It's just like it basically, you know, how like the engine intake, like there's an engine air take. From my understanding, it's just at the same point as the air intake for the engine, there's a channel for the helmet. And so if they drive through smoke, the helmet gets smoke in it. If they drive through <laughs> debris, the helmet gets debris in it. Like it's, uh, not a perfect solution, but it works. They don't have a filter on that? I mean, they have a filter for some of it, but not... I mean, I know, you, like, you can... And especially when they first started messing with it, guys would take off the helmet and there would just be, like, tiny little particles of whatever all over them. Mm. Yeah, that's not ideal. You can say that about a lot of IndyCar things. Yeah. I remember, just like you were saying, stuff all over their face. I remember, um, because I used to work in a concrete lab a lot, just without a mask, and then, like, COVID, and then we started wearing masks, and then I'd come out and be like, wow, everywhere that is my face that isn't where my mask was is really grimy and gross. And then I was like, oh god, I was breathing that stuff for like two years. Yeah, I remember when I moved into the house that I live in now, the attic was a mess and it needed cleaned. And I had to remove the carpet, which had, I guess it was, I don't know, like some kind of like rubber glue was sealing it to the ground in the attic. And I had to scrape that off. And yeah, that was, that's all over my lungs. That'll probably come back to haunt me in like 20, 30 years. Yeah, if we're there. Yeah, good point. <coughs> Makes me want to cough. Which I can't like, I used to like swat my headset microphone out of the way when I needed to cough and stuff, but now I can't really do that. I've got a mic on a boom, like. I have been offered a boom, and I am interested in having that. Oh yeah? Yeah, my, my friend, they have like five monitors on their PC setup. They've got a boom mic, they've got booms for all their PCs. I think they have a boom video cam too. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take a boom. Why not? I'll have to show you a picture of the setup I have now. I am kind of thinking, and you know, chat, you can tell me, you can give me some feedback on this. I'll probably ask a bunch of times, but does anybody want a face cam? Because now that I've got a boom mic and I don't have a headset on, it's like making me rethink things like that. And it's like, do I want to put on a face cam? Trust me, you're not missing any good looks. Price tile can tell you, but I don't know, do people enjoy watching somebody, like, turn a steering wheel? That kind of thing?
What say you, Mr. Christ Tile? With Hello. all this matter, thank you, Pixalas. <laughs> I mean, I kind of agree. When I watch Twitch streams and there's like a face, um, like, you know, somebody's talking at you, it it takes me out of the game and I can't focus on the game itself because I'm so preoccupied with the, the person, the video of the person talking. You know what I'm saying? Personally, so for me, um, if there's a content creator and like they've shown their face before, it doesn't bother me. Like, I know, uh, yes, that is what I identify your content with. But, like, if they come in, and then they, like, do a face reveal, and then it's always there now, I, I don't identify to their content anymore, because it's like they've changed their identity. And, like, if that empowers them to do the content they want, sure, that's fine, whatever, but, like, I don't know. Anytime, like, a content creator's done that, I just kind of, like, lose interest. I don't know, maybe I like the mystery of not knowing who's behind. That's fair. But, I don't know. I don't really care if people want to do face reveals, it's fine, but I feel like it takes away from the content at the same time, in a way. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I, I kind of agree with that, but it does seem like, like you go on Twitch and you go any random channel Seems like eight out of ten times they're gonna have their face in a box in the corner. Yeah. See, I think they should just put it as like a five percent transparency over their stream, so you're <laughs> just always haunted by their image. Just really zoomed in. Just oh yeah. Just a really zoomed in like five percent opacity. Their eyes. <laughs> uh, I turned the ballast up to eighty. By the way, just, uh, I was closing in on Perez a little fast, so. You just bent it into the wall. Well, I did go off that one time. Like, we've basically come from worst up to second here. Part of the issue is, okay, so, they, the AI has trouble not crashing at this track, right? Yes. And so, what that is, is when they try to make a pass, they hit each other in these really tight corners. So, one solution is to reduce the amount of passing. And one way to reduce the amount of passing is to uh, increase the, the amount of division between skill levels. So, if Perez is normally one point higher than Leclerc, make him three points higher. You know what I'm saying? And sure. so on and so on. And that splits the field a little bit more. And so what's actually happened is kind of... Because we've, we've lapped Tsunoda at least once. And we're coming up on him again. I think Perez is held up behind Tsunoda right now. And that's bringing me closer to him. Gotcha. Oh, by the way... Seattle, Colorado. Uh, Seattle's up two to one at second intermission. Nice. That would put them up three to two in that series, wouldn't it? Yes. Yes, it would. I'll take that. Bump me some Colorado Avalanche misery. Uh, suddenly, in the last two years, my most hated team in the NHL, bar none. Sorry um, to all the Colorado Avalanche fans out there. That's silly. Uh, I hate San Jose. San Jose's irrelevant. Yes, which is why it's funny to hate them. It's like, oh, I hate you guys, but luckily the gods of hockey have done me justice, and you suck. You know? How much is it just the hand pass? Oh, it's 100% the hand pass, are you kidding? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. It's like 50% the hand pass. Because Joe Thornton also killed my boy. I disagree. In, like, an attempted manslaughter. David Perron just ran into Thornton as he was exiting the penalty box. I don't know what you want Thornton, Thornton to do. Thornton made such a beeline for Perron out of the penalty box. He stepped out of the box and Perron ran into him. I don't... No, he had full intentions of killing that guy. I think he didn't step out of the way. 
He has the right of way. You're coming onto the ice, you need to enter the ice in a safe manner. You can't just willy-nilly throw yourself out. I'm not sure that's the rule. Actually, the rule might be that you must exit the, the penalty box as soon as the time is up. Either way, you hit him in the head, so it was dirty. He just kind of braced. Oh, Perez is in the wall. He got going again, but that, that helped us gain some time, but he got around Tsunoda doing it. I think he basically made a lunge up the inside to get around Tsunoda and clip the wall. That was, that was fun to watch from back here. Now we got some team orders in play because the next car that Perez has to get around is Ricardo, AKA my teammate. Oh, you know who is playing right now? Nashville. Uh, what? Uh, soccer for ah, the okay. U.S. Open Cup. Yeah. I don't know how to watch it. But... All right, we're around Tsunoda with 20 and a little extra laps to go. Chasing down Perez, who's three seconds ahead. Uh, I have the results for you, if you'd like to know the results of the Nashville game. How'd they do? They won one to nothing over San Antonio. That's the, is San Antonio an MLS team? I don't think so. No. Yeah. They are... They're down there somewhere. This is uh, not a me question. I bring you the stats. I'm not the... Uh... Hunter? Yeah. I'm the, I'm the stats guy. turn <laughs> it is the car is pushing more since I've added 80 ballast oh we got a yellow flag who binned it I don't know I haven't found him yet it looks like it's piastri See if I can get him going. Not nope, for nope, a he's... Year. Still there. All right, I'm gonna try to let Perez get around me. All right, now we're back to now we're back to how we were. No passing under yellow, right? You can have a little passing under yellow. <laughs> I think there's only eight cars right now on the lead lap, and we're only two-thirds of the way through the race, so probably more cars to go a lap down. You can kind of see on the mini-map how many cars are still circulating versus how many are in their pit box DNF. I'm sad. A bit of oversteer on that corner. You're really funny if you crash. Haha. <laughs> you don't have damage on, do you? No. So how are they DNFing? They're just giving up? They no Yeah, more... basically the AI can't figure out how to get pointed straight. And if they can't figure that out in a certain amount of time, they just DNF. Oh. Well, that's kind of sad. Yeah. The AI is very, a, artificial. Have you tried using ChatGPT? <laughs> ChatGPT, where does the track go? Can you point me in the right direction? All right, Perez is around our teammate. And he's got clear sailing ahead of him for a long ways. So we need to get around Ricardo, who has no idea he's our teammate, by the way. So he's not really going to make things easy for us. Do other AI know they have a team? No. 
Mm. So we'll just lunge it down the inside in the hairpin and get around him that way. Now we're two seconds back from Perez. I do think we've kind of found a pretty fair level with this 80 ballast. Like, in open air, I think... I actually think Perez is gaining on us a touch. So we're going to have to find the top of our game to catch up and pass him. Did you post the link to that um, Nashville circuit redesign? I don't think they've... I, basically, they've announced they are redesigning it. I don't think they've come up with a circuit yet. Oh, okay. Because gotcha. they know that their current layout will be interrupted by the construction. Mm, wow, okay. All right, Alonzo just shooting right by us, even though he's a lap down. He's a man with a vision. A plan, you might say. No, why would I say that? The plan? Chipinala? <laughs> So, uh, as of yet, no pit stops from the AI, by the way. Don't know if that's still to come or what, but... Uh, my tires are getting pretty worn out, I feel. As long as it doesn't rain and you keep the hards on, you'll be fine. Well, I've got the mediums on, but I, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be rain. What are my tires looking like? Yeah, we are three out of four in the red there. But that said, I think we can probably finish the race on these tires if we have to, but they're going to be hemorrhaging time as we go. But we're not going to pit until Perez pits. What if he doesn't? Then we don't. Rough. Because they started pitting uh, one of the races I did. They just like started pitting, and I'm like, oh, we do pit stops now. The, uh, the Saudi Arabia race I did. Which I won, by the way. No, I didn't win. I finished third, I think. But uh, very amused by a gay guy being on the podium. Well, you know what doesn't help your tire life is locking up the rear. At least it's locked in. I mean, better than falling off, I suppose. One side, clear left. Do I feel bad running a food processor at almost 11 at night? No. I didn't realize it was getting that late. It's a little late. I was I was really tired earlier. <laughs> then I came in here and now I'm not. Uh, add what is it, seven hours? And that's what time it is for Trixales, I think. This is Sweden era. Or Sweden time. German. Deutsch. No. Sweden time. Five forty two AM. Yep. Seven hours. My uh, brother, you might see him around here sometimes, this Bye Bye Turkey Neck. He's over in Sweden doing some study abroad stuff, so the Which time is seven zone. Hours is great. I think so. See? Sweden time. Or is he eight? I thought he was seven. 
I think he was 8 for a while, and then, like, the daylight savings happened over there, and then he was back up with us. Maybe, yeah. Sounds plausible. Oh, God! Oof. Well. Uh, you were saying it'd be funny if I crashed, right? Quite hilarious. There we go. LOL. We got it in. That'll probably be the uh, intro clip for the for the episode on YouTube. I always do that if I crash. To be fair, though, massively epic flick spin to get it going again. Uh, and we're back to P3. Yeah, we're GMT plus six, plus, minus, I don't know, but vibe. Oh. Out here in, uh, where do we say we're from? Toledo? What? Sorry, food processor is loud. Where are we from? Toledo? Was that the... We're from... We're from Akron, bro. Akron. That's it. Akron. Not above Akron, Ohio. Such a beautiful place. Now we're just, oh, only uh, eight, no, 12, 12 laps left. Sorry, I can't do math, but. Uh, okay, we grew up in Akron. Yeah. Uh, getting down to the end of the race here, we're, at this point, ever since I added the extra 80 ballast, um, it's been a much more competitive race. At this point, we're just doing our best to stay on the podium. Leclerc is going to try to take it away from us right here, though. Crash him. Well, I could have. He didn't give me room to go through there. I opted to take the grass and let him by. All right, Perez is pitting right now, so yes, pit stops are happening. Which I'd like to go down to. Uh, Softs? The yellow ones. I want to go on the yellow ones. And then we'll go Medium. ahead and... No, because there's super soft, soft... No, ultra soft, super soft, soft, medium, hard, I think. Uh oh Okay, you have that stuff. Got it. That's just what the mod came with. But... It's the middle one, but I don't think it's categorized. I'll look after the race, but I'm pretty sure it's not listed as medium on here. Either way, we're going for the yellow tires, and we're going to come in and pit since we've already spun out once, and I can clearly tell that the uh, tires have had it. And Perez pitted. If you recall, I said I'd pit when Perez pit. If you recall, I said it Now, the problem with the Seto Corza is if... Uh, if this mod isn't working, then pit stops are randomized as far as time for the AI. What are you doing? Why are you just stopping? I do not feel bad for you. There go my guys. Look at them go. Look at them go. Oh, we put on the... No, we put on the yellows. Okay. We're good. 
Yeah, I'm just, I'm from IndyCar. I don't know how to say words. I just say the color. Yeah, we came out well ahead of Perez, which means that the, like, randomized pit stop time is a thing. I think. I don't know. Where is Perez? Do I have a thing for that? I don't know. There's some menu. I can't check the standings. We might come in and make an additional stop if uh, if their stops were super slow. Because I was thinking Perez just went back to fourth, but that's Russell. Might have to turn pit stops back off after this race, even though this mod advertises that you can do them. Because it's not that they don't take the pit stop, it's that... It's totally randomized. One person might make a five second pit stop, the other person might make a five minute pit stop. And that kind of just know. ruins everything. Yeah, that's not ideal. That's a. <laughs> Aceto Corza is weird like that. Like. It's the best racing sim out there until it does stuff like that. And then it's like, why? Why? Why didn't you just program this correctly from the start? <laughs> it has no yellow flag support, has no blue flag support. You know what I mean? Like, there's all these things that's just missing. And it's like, you almost did it. You almost made the perfect no one would ever complain game. Do they still update Assetto Corsa? Or? No, they've got a sequel, which is not exactly... It's called Assetto Corsa Competizione. And uh, it's not... It is more like their swing at tackling iRacing rather than the original Assetto Corsa being their attempt to like do R-Factor, where this is moddable and all that. Uh, Competizione is more... Um, Online based, not moddable, that kind of thing. Looks like Science is taking the pits. Maybe not. Maybe I misread the mini map there. Well, learn to read. Fair, fair. I mean, I'm just basically judging because the pit road is the exit of this hairpin. And I thought it looked like he got through the hairpin really slowly, so I was thinking, oh, he must be entering the pits. But I guess not. If you had a favorite F1 driver, who would it be? Uh, like current? Yeah, well, alright, both. Uh, I like Vettel and Alonzo. They're just cool guys. Alright. I look forward to Lando Norris getting in a better car, though. You think he'll move up from McLaren? I hope he does. I think Zala is his all-time battle. I knew, I knew that, actually. We've talked about it before. Some uh, German pride over there, I think. I think Raikkonen is the funniest F1 driver we've ever had on the paddock.
Now I am a known stroll hater. Don't really like stroll. Uh, my favoritism or lack thereof for F1 drivers very much depends on how uh, they view other categories of motorsport. Like, there's certain drivers who look down on other categories. Not a fan of those guys, but like, uh, for example, Michael Schumacher called IndyCar a minor league. That that means I never liked Michael Schumacher. Like, all right, buddy, guess we're not going to be friends. Um, but Alonso came over and tried IndyCar, so. And, uh, hey, Michael, if it was such a, such a uh, minor league, how come Fernando Alonso failed to qualify for one race and never finished higher than, like, 21st? Tell me that, Michael. I get bitter quickly. Probably a byproduct of all the tea I drink. I just want my tahini to work, ma'am. Tahini's good. You said tahini, right? Yeah. So maybe Ferrari's just not gonna pit? Ferrari master plan. It might work. Yeah, I'd say that. Alonso is a lot of fun to watch right now. Just because who saw Aston Martin being as good as they are? I figured they'd be, like, fourth. Especially when McLaren announced that they were gonna suck, you know? Yeah. And God, the French drivers can't do anything. They're stupid. I don't know how Europeans feel about the French, but I don't like that. Uh, I think the French are silly gooses. Geese, even? Yeah, they are geese. They're kind of assholes. <laughs> Ferrari plans, always a good thing. Not. I will say the French have a knack for doing things like protesting, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Viva la revolucion. That's Spanish. I don't know. It's a romance language. It's close. Yikes, dude. At least I knew it wasn't actually French. Ah, oh, we're dropping frames. Can I have my frames back, please? I just want some frames. This is what you get for messing with the Franken language. Yeah, that's fair. Hey, Zanardi ran a couple of seasons in F1, so I can say that Zanardi's my favorite F1 driver of all time. Not really for what he did in F1, but... <laughs> but it I applies. Like Grosjean's my favorite Indy car driver. Is that just because he was in F1? No, it's because he's just funny to watch. He's uh, a, bit of a bit of a kamikaze. Takuma Sato, if you will. Uh, see, I can't call Takuma Sato a kamikaze. That would be racist. Oh, is he Japanese? Yes. I did not T know that. Takuma-san? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's Japanese. I don't know. Or who, who did they call the torpedo in um, F1? Um, Danny Kiat? Oh, I saw him in a NASCAR race last year. How do you do? I think he got crashed. <laughs> that sounds right. Same with Raikkonen. Raikkonen did a NASCAR race last year. Which I love. That's one of my big... I don't know if complaint is the right word, but when people say all of the F1 drivers are better than the rest of the world's drivers, like F1 is the pinnacle of driving talent, my my response is always prove it because you can't it's so insulated the the f1 talent comes up through the f1 ladder right there's 
Formula 3, Formula 2, Formula 1, and before that, there's like all sorts of different regional, like F3000 and things like that. And, um, like, you never get to see an F1 driver race a NASCAR or an Indy car or a supercar or a touring car, right? Like, you don't get to see that. And so all the credit to guys like Raikkonen and Kvyat and coming out of the single-seater right. categories to try right. something new, to try and, like, measure themselves against other talent. Weren't there a ton of former F1 drivers in, like, a really big endurance race recently? Maybe... Yeah, I think Raikkonen even, like, said that was the most fun he's had racing in a long time. Well, I'm sure. I don't think... I mean, this might be controversial to say, but I don't think F1's very fun. It seems really high stress. Yeah, it's 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 so political. Like, and I don't mean political, like, like n national politics. I mean internal Formula One politics. You have to rub elbows with the right people to keep your job. You have to impress the right... You know, you have to bring money, you have to find money, you have to, you know what I mean, like, you have to be the FIA golden boy sometimes. Like, I mean, it's so, it, it's, sometimes it's not about the racing at all. Right. They insist they went racing, though. Yeah. Okay, I think we're at two to go coming across the line here. Now, that said, I think what I'm learning, like... What I'm trying to learn, what I'm trying to teach myself is for years and years, uh, if you tell me you're the best there ever was, I'm going to think of you as kind of an arrogant jerk, right? And that is sort of my impression of F1 before this year. And now this year, I'm trying to kind of open my mind and be like, okay, yeah, there is a lot of that, but let's just ignore that. Let's ignore that sort of negative, arrogant side of F1, and let's just try to enjoy it for what it is and how it is. And, uh... You know, I, there's a lot of enjoyment you can get out of that. Take the good without the bad, if you will. And we got Russell right up, right up on our gearbox here, almost. Yeah, I think Ferrari, unless they pit on literally the last turn of the last lap, uh, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna win this thing. I don't know what happened to Perez. He must have taken an infinity pit stop, you know? But... Alright. Hairpin, and then we're taking the white flag. So as Jim just said, if we can not screw this last lap up, we're on the podium. Russell's gained about uh, four, half, half a second on us. See if that makes things interesting. When you can see him in the mirror, he's there. Alright, looks like it's a Ferrari 1-2. Looks like that's official now. We're coming around the hairpin at the Marrakesh Street Circuit one more time. Down the front straightaway. And we're going to hold off Russell for P3. Race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too easy, too easy for you, though. Uh, well, I do think I probably should have started with some ballast in the beginning, um, because that 80, probably I should have set it to like 65 the whole time, because 80 was a bit slow, but um, it made it made it more interesting as we went on.